Hi, I'm Peter Pedals. Welcome to the Gaia Energy Show. Today I'm going to take on a journey through the wonderful world of renewable energy. With the world slowly but surely being affected by the gradual build-up of greenhouse gases and nations taking their claims on the ever-diminishing fossil fuel supplies, there has never been a greater need for societies to change the way they manage, generate and consume energy. In this show, we'll introduce you to some of the technologies and strategies that have been developed and adopted by many people from all walks of life in the past few decades. Generating your own power is not only easy, it is also tremendously satisfying. The Gaia Energy Show is designed to make the technologies and ideas discussed entertaining and easy to understand. The systems we will focus on in this series will be photovoltaic or solar electric panels, which are used to convert sunlight into electrical energy. Small scale electricity generating hydro systems used to harness the power of water and wind turbines designed to harness the energy of the wind. We will also discuss the use of different energy storage systems and strategies for reducing energy consumption and operating costs. So sit back and enjoy the journey. The first system we will look at today is based on the electricity generated from the sun using solar or photovoltaic modules. These panels were first designed for the NASA space program back in the early 1970s. Since that time, the cost of producing these panels has dropped significantly and efficiency has been gradually improved. The solar panel converts sunlight into electrical energy, which can then be used to power a variety of electrical appliances such as lights, power tools, water pumps and computers. The cells inside the solar module are made of refined silicon. When sunlight shines on wafers made from this specially treated material, the energy in the light is transferred to the electrons in the silicon. The electrons then flow out of each cell with new energy. This energy can be used in a variety of ways, directly to drive electrical appliances such as water pumps and electrical tools, or stored in batteries for later use during nightfall or cloudy periods. Or if you are connected to the power grid and you are generating an excess, you can feed it back into the grid for profit or credits. Another alternate energy system that has proven very popular with landholders living near a watercourse is this micro hydro power unit. This system has been designed and manufactured by the Rainbow Power Company and is more than capable of supplying power for an average household. This unit is a low maintenance solution for the landholder. The third and final device we will look at today is the wind turbine. These units require an exposed site such as the top of a hill or flat plain and help complement both hydro and solar systems. These units usually sit on top of a tower to help catch the breeze and also to place the whirling blades out of harm's way. The units are designed to handle strong winds and are self-regulating in the areas of orientation and speed. Now that we are familiar with these alternate energy systems, let's get up close and personal with some installations in the local community. Okay, here we have a micro hydro in operation. This has been in situ here for probably at least 15 years. You can see the water pipe coming in here, that's water coming in under pressure. Uh, probably about 45 or 50 metres of water pressure we've got behind it. That's being released through the nozzle and, and after it's done its job generating electricity, that's your overflow water filling the tank here. So this tank then provides water for all the people that live below this point. And now that I've shown you this turbine, well, I'll take you up to the catchment and have a look up there. Okay, we're here on Blue Knob, which is part of the Great Caldera, the biggest caldera in the southern hemisphere. This is where I live, not up here but further down. Right, and this is our water source. Uh, this water source is probably at about 500 metres above sea level, and we've got something like, uh, what's that, three or 400 metres of head on this property. So um, what we've done here, we've spent lots of time carrying sand and cement up here on our backs, through the rainforest, up through, through very difficult terrain, right, with a whole crew of us. We'd carry that up, bring it up to here, We'd, we'd, we'd make a cement slurry out of it, we'd find the local rocks and cement them all together. And we made this damn wall out of it. Right, so this is our catchment. You can see the pipe coming out of it. 
and that pipe then feeds down to the hydro that you, you'll see in our film here. Well, as I was saying earlier on, we built this dam out of rocks all cemented together and, and cemented down onto solid bedrock. We had a problem one day when uh, the, the, the pipe broke open somewhere and caused so much suction that the suction caused the filter to collapse. Right, so what we then came up with this idea of having uh, an inlet pipe higher than the water level which is actually able to suck air. If, if, so if, it's, if the pipe is trying to suck too hard, instead of sucking water down through the, the block filter, it then sucks air into there instead. But that alleviates the problem of collapsing the filter. Now we've just seen some examples of renewable energy systems. So let's go and visit someone who's been living with renewable energy for over 10 years. How long have you been living with renewable energy? I've been living with renewable energy for about over 20 years now. What are the advantages and disadvantages? When I first came here it was going to cost me over $30,000 to uh, put the maid's power on. It cost me much less uh, mm. to put the uh, renewable energy system in. Last year that Nimbin had uh, half a dozen blackheads or more um, up to a day and um, that's uh, something I don't have to suffer uh, living with alternative energy. And uh, yet another ad uh, advantage which uh, makes me uh, feel good is uh, that I, I don't, uh, I'm not contributing uh, or using the coal-fired power. The only small disadvantage really I can see is uh, unlike people in the, in the city that just flick the switch and pay the bill, and have no more to do with it or call the electrician, I, uh, I have to check my batteries, make sure everything's working, keep my eye on the voltmeter and uh, I do the occasional maintenance. And so to summarise really, I, I think that uh, there's uh, mostly advantages uh, and there's just the, the small disadvantage of, uh, of the initial cost and um, uh, a little bit of maintenance. What happens Terry when you want to have a hot shower? I've got a solar hot water system and the water travels through the hot water system and I've got a pipe which goes through the back of my combustion fire. Do you use an electric stove? Electric stoves use far too much power and gas is a much more efficient way to cook. Is it reliable? Well, one, one component of the system is the hydro. Uh, that runs 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, non-stop, uh, when there's water, which is 99% of the time. Uh, the other side of it is the solar panels. Well, they obviously only work when the sun's up, but they've been running continuously now for uh, over 10 years or so. Is it safe? My renewable energy system is no more dangerous than a normal ha uh, home in the city, uh, as long as it's installed correctly uh, by qualified people and you have your fusing, uh, it's perfectly safe. How do you feel about using renewable energy? The main advantage is, is the independence that I feel from uh, uh, generating my own power. Um, the saving uh, of the greenhouse gases and not contributing to that scenario. Um, also, I think living in, uh, the living in harmony with nature uh, is, is a really good feeling. And that feel, feels like I'm leaving a, a very light footprint on the planet. And I, I think the other uh, main issue is that I don't feel that I'm in that running around on the treadmill. In this segment, let's go and have a look at some clever ideas that will help us reduce our reliance on coal-fired power stations. This is a pedal electric vehicle. Uh, it's worth between thirteen and fifteen hundred dollars, depending on what model you go for. And they're very economical to run because um, you can charge it off the mains, or if you have a renewable energy system, you can charge it off it as well, so off solar or hydro or wind or whatever you happen to have. The range of this bike is about 50 kilometres or so, depending on the terrain and how you use it, um, which is enough of a range in order to make it quite a usable suburban vehicle to get it around to do your shopping, etc., because you normally wouldn't c cover more than 50 kilometres on a daily sort of suburban trip. When it comes to hilly terrain, um, 
it's not enough to just rely on a motor. It may not get you up the hill, so you might have to do some pedalling as well. But it certainly then would make it easier to get up the hill because it's not just your pedalling, but it's the motor that's then also helping you. And effectively, it's a two-wheel drive vehicle as well because the motor is in the front wheel and you're pedalling the back wheel. Now you should allow about a period of about 12 hours to charge this machine. Also, there's been surprising developments in everyday technology, such as this handheld torch. It uses three AA batteries and can run amazingly for more than 50 hours. Now, here we have a bathroom extractor fan. Not your run-of-the-mill bathroom extractor fan. If you look at the back of it, when you turn your shower on, the water that actually goes to your shower head passes through here and turns the propeller as it does so and doesn't waste any extra energy. And most of all, you don't have to remember to turn your fan on and off. Here at Rambo Power Company, we're always looking for new technologies that will help us develop new products. For instance, LED technology has changed quite a bit in the last few years. We now have a very bright white LED. The LEDs use such a small amount of power that this enables us to make a kit up using a very small solar panel and a very small battery bank. But here we're looking at a system that might only cost around the $300 mark, which is quite affordable for anybody in Australia or, or anywhere else in the world. Through clever designs such as these, we can reduce the amount of energy that we use. The wind industry is probably the world's fastest growing industry at this point of time. It's growing at an annual rate of about 30% per year, which equates to quadrupling in size over the last five years. Millions of dollars are being invested on wind farms in Europe and also here in Australia. Australia happens to have some of the best wind sites in the world, especially along the southern coastline. Another exciting development is the recent federal government approval for a solar tower to be built. This solar tower will be a chimney about a kilometre high with 32 turbines which will generate as much electricity as the average coal-fired power station. The unique feature of this design is that it generates power 24 hours a day and produces no greenhouse gases. A smaller version of this design has been running in Spain efficiently and reliably for the last seven years. Designs such as these are greatly encouraging as they point to a more sustainable future. Wind turbines have been proven to be one of the success stories and are likely to be generating large amounts of renewable energy into the future. The number of wind turbines that are to be installed will have a significant impact on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. In Europe, where land is at a premium and people complain about visual pollution, these wind turbines are being installed offshore. There are many changes afoot. We are now entering into the exciting new millennia of renewable energy and hopefully the future will be leaner and greener. Okay, well we've had some, a look at some interesting strategies for generating power, but the million dollar question is, how much is it going to cost? Uh, what I must say to this is that it's like asking how long is a piece of string. Each uh, customer has its own requirements and we have to design a system to correspond with their requirements. Uh, to give you a rough idea, let's go and have a look at some examples of some systems. Well, the first example is a mini solar lighting kit, which is a, a kit designed for people that can't afford very much, uh, but with only very basic needs, such as a bit of lighting, uh, radio, TV, well, if it's going to be a TV, probably black and white TV, and, and a bit of stereo. That's about it. So here we have a system. So what are we looking at? Uh, four hours of lighting on average, uh, a couple of hours of black and white TV, and a couple of hours of radio cassette would, would work on the system fine. And you're looking at a, a total system cost of about a thousand dollars. Okay, well let's say you're not very happy watching a black and white TV. You'd much rather be watching colour TV and maybe a few other appliances, perhaps a, a, a water pump or something. To do this, you'd probably look at the system a little bit bigger than the previous one, and probably costing you about three thousand dollars. Yeah, for around about three thousand dollars you would get 280 watt solar modules, a frame to mount them on, a 250 amp hour battery bank and a 200, 200 watt inverter. The battery bank I'm talking about in this case is 250 amp hour, two 6 watt batteries wired up in series. Uh, this system also includes a 20 amp regulator with an LCD display. The display will show you a whole range of information, it will tell you what the battery voltage is, how many amps is flowing in, how many amps is being used up, how many amp hours have come in for the day, how many amp hours you've used for the day, and then also give you a state of charge of the battery. But on top of that, you can also toggle through the history, and it tells you all that information for every day for the last 30 days. System 3 is using roughly twice as much power as System 2, but you're also looking at a lot more expense. You're looking at roughly $5,000 worth of equipment. What you would get for around about $5,000 would include four 80-watt solar modules, 
a solar frame to mount them on, two lots of 350 amp hour battery banks, a distribution box, a 20 amp regulator, and this time a 350 watt sine wave inverter. We've just looked at a couple of the smaller examples, but let's take a big jump up to a System 7. Uh, System 7 would include most of the mod cons that most people would expect to have in their homes, including uh, a lot more lighting in this case, six hours worth of lighting, a fridge, a food mixer, a TV, a VCR, a stereo, a desktop computer, a printer, a fax, a vacuum cleaner, washing machine, sewing machine, etc. Uh, with the System 7 you can expect to be paying out probably $24,000 and that would include 16 80 watt modules, four mounting frames to mount the modules on, a 350 amp hour 48 volt battery bank, a distribution box, a 40 amp digital regulator, and a 3,300 watt sine wave inverter. We've had a look at a few examples there, small and medium size. You can go much, much larger than that. The uh, Rainbow Power Company, for example, has 100 solar modules on its roof. So there's uh, an infinite number of systems that you can design, and we have to match it according to people's power consumption. You may feel a little bit apprehensive about spending this much money on a solar power system, but you have to bear in mind that these are extremely reliable systems. First of all, you shouldn't have to be suffering from any brownouts or blackouts in your power supply. And secondly, most of the components don't break down or very seldomly break down. The solar modules have got a 25-year warranty. They should last 30, 40 years, no problem at all, but the warranty period already is 25 years. The inverter is solid state. It usually don't break down. Yeah, all the components are basically long term. The battery bank is probably the biggest bugbear of the system. The battery bank might need to be replaced every 8 to 15 years, depending on which particular battery bank you go for. Well, that's the end of our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more information, come and visit us here in Nimbin. We're easy to find. Or log on to our website, which is rpc.com.au. You've been watching the Gaia Energy Show with Peter Pedals.